All right, so for assignment three, we're going to take our fantasy creature and we're going to try to place it believably in a landscape. And ideally, that landscape would be your fantasy landscape. But if for whatever reason you don't think your fantasy landscape is suitable to this, maybe you have an underwater creature and your fantasy landscape has no water in it, or you just have no idea how you can put your fantasy creature into your fantasy landscape, you can also just use a found landscape, right, and put your creature in. But realize that then the found landscape will be recognizable as someone else's work, and you should give that person credit uh, as you post to the assignment, and then you, should, you certainly shouldn't use the assignment outside of just your own educational portfolio. Okay, the goal is to make it of the highest quality we can. So if we were to print it, that would be at least 300 pixels per inch at eight by 10 inches. But because, and that's true if you're using Photoshop, I encourage you to keep your landscape at the fullest size you can. And I usually use a pixel per inch of 350. But if we're using PhotoP, like I will be using, because we're using all free resources and simple hardware this semester, um, I will be doing it at screen resolution, which is around 8 by 10 by 72 pixels per inch. Now, the idea of taking something that's created and putting it into a, a photographic, quote unquote, real setting is something we've seen in film in the past. I remember first seeing it in Mary Poppins, kind of blending animation and live action. And the way you really sell the illusion, this is a, a screen grab from, from Space Jam, is to match the lighting and to match the color temperature and to match the atmosphere, you know, with focus pools and all of that. So that's what we're going to be learning. We've already learned how to, how to composite together something and how to cut it out cleanly and how to adjust its placement, adjust its edges, adjust its color, and adjust its lighting and value. So now we just need to bring those skills into a landscape. And we're going to do that using what's called a non-destructive overlay layer. So I'm going to show you how to set that up in PhotoP. And this is a past student example. And then, of course, there are past videos to see how um, I've done this in the past. But I'm going to walk you through with these videos how we're going to do it this semester. OK, so the first thing we need is our creature, right? So I'm going to hopefully be nicely organized, open up my digital art folder, open up assignment two, and find my latest creature. And I'm going to use PhotoP. So to get started with this, you need a clean creature design. So it starts with opening up your latest version of assignment two. And since I uh, posted and finished assignment two last class, I decided to do a little bit more work on it before I put it into my landscape. And that's why we do this assignment, assignment three. It gives you a chance to revisit your work. Let's see. So this was my most recent version. And what did I do? Well, I added that tail that I was missing. And then I also did a little bit um, of dodging and burning. And that's about it. It took me a while to construct that tail from a few different resources. And I fixed little uh, edges that were like had spurs on them. And I could still work more on this creature. But this is a pretty good place for it to be for me to. Uh, to put it into a landscape. <clears throat> but this is my Photoshop version, right? So this has all these different layers. Oh, I want to take these ads off for you. Try not to show you advertisements if I can help it. And I'm going to close these other tabs I don't need open.
All right. So now that I have my full creature constructed and I have the background turned off and you can always check, I'll make a duplicate of the background, Command J, and then I'm going to fill that duplicate with gray. This will be something we do a lot when we make uh, spot illustrations, free floating illustrations like logos or creature designs. And then I'm going to do the same thing with a new background layer and I'm going to fill it with black. And if it can look good and believable on a black background, on a gray background, and on a white background, that means I don't have any stray pixels or weird leftovers at the edges that need to be trimmed out. So I'm going to turn off all of those backgrounds. You want to make sure you save it as a PSD. And then in order to be able to use it as one combined kind of sticker to put into your landscape and so that you can post it to Canvas, we are going to export it as a PNG. A PNG is an online file format. It compresses, it saves memory. It is not an archive format. It is not how you want to keep it for your records, but it's how you want to post it online. But the difference between a JPEG and a PNG is that a PNG supports transparency. So all of this will be empty space. Whereas if I save it as a JPEG, that will automatically get filled in with white pixels. Okay, now that I've saved it as a JPEG, I can close, or sorry, not as a JPEG, as a PNG, I can close it. And you'll know that you've saved it as a PNG because when you post it to Canvas, it will just show up on this kind of grayish white background. But when you post it to Imgur, and this would be for assignment two, not assignment three, but in Imgur, it will show up on a black background. So we save as a PNG if we want, want it to be transparent. Okay, so next, now I need to open my landscape, either one I find from online or my assignment one. And if I'm using my own assignment, it's preferable because then I can open up my PSD. Because what does my PSD landscape assignment have? It has different layers of depth an atmosphere already built in and it's already sized to be the resolution I want. I think that's what I ended up with maybe. All right, so now how do I put my creature into this landscape? Well, I'm going to start at the very top and I'm actually going to unlock my sketch here and then get rid of that sketch layer. Delete this uh, atmosphere fog layer I'm not using. And then I can get rid of my sketch layer at the back. I really shouldn't have any layers in this that aren't necessary. So I don't think layer six is necessary. But everything else is. All right, so now I'm going to go to my very top layer and I'm going to bring in my cutout creature PNG. So to do that in PhotoP, I say open in place and I go back to assignment two and that would be the the latest PNG that I saved from my last from last um, class but I had just downloaded a new one today, so I still need to organize that into my folder, but it's in my downloads folder right now, so I can open it up from right there. So there it is. So notice how big it comes in. 
And you can always check image size. It's always good to be aware of your image size. So I switch it to inches so I can read that. So this is 12 inches by 10 and a half inches by 72 pixels per inch. And my creature, if you remember, was done at 10 inches by 10 inches by 72 pixels per inch. So it, your creature should come in basically filling your landscape. And it comes in, you can see the little icon within the layer window. It comes in as a smart object. So if I try to start erasing away from it immediately, for whatever reason, like, oh, I want that toenail to be behind the rock, it's going to say, in order to edit it, at least to take away pixels or to add pixels to that layer, I need to rasterize it. But I don't want to rasterize it. First, I want to play with some different placements. So first, I'm going to keep it as a smart, as a smart layer. That allows me to grow it or shrink it, and it will always be the strongest quality possible because it's referencing that original file. So I'm going to use control T. I'm going to see, okay, how big can I keep this creature? I can kind of place them in the foreground right there and keep them pretty darn big. But I don't know if that's the most believable or the most interesting. So what's another way? Well, I can make them smaller and I can hold down shift to keep the proportions the same. And I can kind of maybe put him behind the crystals. So move him behind some of these foreground elements. Then turn off auto select and see, okay, so where would he look good here? Maybe like that. Okay, maybe I want to grow him bigger than that, but at that same depth. But then he's a little too hidden. So maybe I want to flip him by right-clicking inside the transform box. So you have all these different options. And maybe I want him to be way in the background. So what if I move him even further back into the atmosphere? Whoops. I have to turn off auto select. So my creature is rising as a, like a celestial being. So you have lots of uh, options. What I want you to do is to play with those options and decide on your placement before you rasterize. Ah. Control T, Control T. Wait, my background keeps showing up as a gray square instead of transparent. What what file are you on, Gideon? Give me some context. Uh, I exported my creature to a PNG and opened in my fantasy landscape, and it comes with this big gray square around it. Okay, so that's because you have to turn off that gray background in your layers before you save it as a PNG. You just turn the eyeball off. Wait, what's the point of it, though? It was so we could see if there was any extra pixels and debris that oh, we weren't okay. seeing around our creature. All right, so I'm gonna actually take a pretty pretty clear and obvious placement for my creature. You can see I tilted him a little bit. I'm looking at where the hands position with the rocks, and I'm gonna place him right here. And I say in the assignment sheet, I want your creature to take up at least 25% of your composition, even if that means you have to crop down your landscape a little bit. And that's because I don't want you to hide your creature anywhere. Now, one way to kind of mess with that is to, um, and some students have done this in the past, you can make just a lot of versions of your creature.